हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ गोस्वामी एंड टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू विद द किडनी लेक्चर्स सो टुडे आई एम आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट द फोकल सेगमेंटल ग्लोमेरुलोस्क्लेरोसिस इट इज़ वन ऑफ द टाइप ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम अंटिल नाउ इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स ऑफ किडनी देन काइंडली चेक द प्ले एंड सी दैट वीडियो फर्स्ट सो देट यू कैन ईजिली अंडरस्टैंड फोकल सेगमेंटल ग्लोमेरुलोस्क्लेरोसिस राइट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम सो सी माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर एंड देन सी दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर ऑल राइट so as far as the definition of the uh, definition of the focal segmented glomerulosclerosis is concerned uh name itself suggest here focal means only some glomerulus of kidney is involved and the segmental means in the one glomerulus there is only part of glomeruli is involved right there is only some glomerulus involvement and among the glomerulus only a part of glomerulus is involved that's why it is known by the name focal segmental glomerulosclerosis type of nephrotic syndrome you will not be new, you will not believe it is one of the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome that is seen overall right it's a most common cause of nephrotic syndrome all right it has been observed that uh, you know apolipoprotein l1 gene sequence variation on the chromosome number 22 is associated with the increased risk of development of this particular nephrotic syndrome right this particular gene is associated with fsgs it is most important mcq all right now basically there are five types or classification of the focal segmented glomerulosclerosis the first one is idiopathic or primary in which you doesn't have any etiology right and the patient will develop fsgs the second one second type or classification is secondary to some underlying cause so here the secondary disease that is associated with fsgs are hiv then heroin addiction then sickle cell anemia and the massive obesity uh, this four particular uh, con- clinical condition associated with fsgs right third classification third most important etiology for fsgs development is iga nephropathy which we will see in our next lecture all right now the fourth category is adaptive response right adaptive response to the loss of renal tissue in this particular condition renal tissue can be lost right in the renal ablation then in the unilateral renal agenesis then renal dysplasia then hypertensive nephropathy and reflux nephropathy in all this condition there could be loss of renal tissue and so because of that compensatory adaptive chronic inflammation and fibrosis will lead to development of fsgs it's adaptive response right and the f- final condition is genetic mutation of certain genes like that of podocin actin in 4 trpc6 etc right and so fifth category is genetic mutation all right so let's understand the genetic basis for the development of fsgs in the detail which genes are responsible for development of this fsgs you, you know these are the most important mcqs the genes are asked frequently in the exam so the first gene associated with fsgs development is nphs1 gene this particular gene located on the chromosome number 19 and it is located over the long arm region 1 and band 3 it encode the one specific protein that is nephrin name is nephrin and it is uh, you know this nephrin is a key component of slit diaphragm which control the glomerular permeability the slit diaphragm is present at the site of attachment of visceral epithelial cell to the gbm right the the food process of visceral epithelial cell attached to the gbm at that site slit diaphragm is present and the nephrin gene is located in that area if it is mutated right then there could be development of fsgs because it controls the permeability and its mutation causing the finishing type of nephrotic syndrome the second gene that is associated with fsgs is alpha actin in 4 protein you know it's a podocyte actin binding protein and its mutation causing autosomal dominant variety of fsgs third important gene is nphs2 this particular gene located on the chromosome number 1 and the long arm it encode the protein podocin and it is also located in the slit diaphragm here you can see that this nphs1 is located on the chromosome number 19 and it encode the protein nephrin which is present in slit diaphragm here also there is a 
presence of uh, one protein podocin that is located in the slit diaphragm location is similar but coding gene is different here it is nphs2 and it is located on chromosome number one its mutation also causes the fhgs that is uh, that will lead to development of autosomal recessive type of fhgs which is a uh, resistant to steroid right all right the final genetic cause for the development of fhgs is the mutation of trpc6 gene you know mutation of this particular gene will increases the calcium ex excess you know it will increase the calcium influx in the podocyte and we know very well that whenever there is an increase in the calcium excessive calcium can lead to irreversible cell type of injury right all right and its mutation causing adult onset fsgs so whenever there is a reduction in the renal mass here there is a sclerosis of glomerulus understand so there will be reduction of the renal mass and because of which there will be intraglomerular hypertension and because of hypertension there could be damage to the capillaries which will activate a coagulation system and because of endothelial injury protein urea is present right all right now let's see the light microscopic morphology of fsgs so if we observe the kidney biopsy in the light microscopy then commonly it is associated with increased mesangial matrix this is because of development of glomerulonephritis now you need to understand that in the fsgs patient can present with glomerulonephritis or patient can present with nephrotic syndrome so if glomerulonephritis is present then there there would be increase of the mesangial matrix and capillary lumen obliteration is seen because of damage to the capillary right glomerular capillary is damaged in the nephritis in the inflammation capillaries is damaged right so because of capillary or endothelial damage of gbm there will be leakage of the plasma protein and the highline material into the glomerulus and so homogeneous eosinophilic highline material deposition can be seen in the glomerulus and as it is chronic inflammation forming macrophages can be seen macrophages are the chronic inflammatory cells right all right so this is the image of fsgs now in this particular diagram you can see that this whole uh, see only some part of glomerulus of the kidney is involved right in this glomerulus you can see that there is only involvement of this portion right rest of the glomerulus is free here also you can see that only part of glomerulus is involved it doesn't involve whole glomerulus only part of glomerulus is involved that's why it is focal segmental glomerular sclerosis this is the same schematic diagram given in the hers mohan book it shows that here there is only part of glomerulus is involved right this this is the uninvolved portion you can see that only a part of glomerulus is involved right and so in the glomerulus you can see the involved and uninvolved both part right only part of glomerulus is involved here only you can see a sclerosis right that's why it is a focal segmental glomerular sclerosis i hope that you can easily understand what do you mean by sclerosis sclerosis means fibrosis right in our previous lecture we have seen that uh, which are the morphologies of uh, you know glomerular nephritis glomerular diseases so in that video i have discussed the sclerosis also why sclerosis developed so this is the sclerosis right all right now this is very interesting there is a one variant of fsgs exist the name is collapsing variant it is the it is not the traditional form of fsgs right here what happened the name itself suggests there is a sudden collapse of glomerular tuft and you will have visceral epithelial hyperplasia podocyte hyperplasia means right so because of the collapse of glomerular tuft uh, the patient can undergo you know renal failure and patient can die the prognosis is very worst in this variety so it's a important mcq and this uh, this is particularly seen in these three condition one is hiv then certain drugs and microvascular injury right and you have to remember that in the advanced stage of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis there will be always in the advanced stage there will be always tubular atrophy and extensive fibrosis in the glomerulus and interstitium the finally in the advanced stage whole glomerulus is involved and you will have the many glomeruli involved and finally you know the patient can enter into end stage renal disease so in the advanced stage on 
part of glomerulus is not involved it will involve the whole glomerulus which is known by the name global sclerosis right all right now what is the electron microscopic appearance of fscs so always remember in the electron microscopy the main characteristic finding is visceral epithelial cell damage right visceral epithelial cells are damaged and so podocyte effacement can be seen in electron microscopy now if you remember my previous lecture then we have seen that in the minimal chain disease also there is a effacement of food process right so the immediate differential diagnosis of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis is minimal chain disease all right in the immunofluorescence microscopy there could be a deposition of immunoglobulin and complement c3 interesting fact is that here igg is not deposited but the deposited immunoglobulin is igm all right now what could be the clinical feature of fsgs so we have discussed that focal segmental glomerulosclerosis can present as nephritic syndrome or nephrotic syndrome right so if it is presented as nephritic syndrome then we know that in the nephritic syndrome patient can have hypertension hematuria reduced gfr oliguria and edema the massive protein urea is not present in nephritic syndrome but if the patient present with nephrotic syndrome type of fsgs then the patient will have non selective protein urea as a main complaint because in the nephrotic syndrome the main presentation is massive protein urea there is a huge amount of loss of protein in the urine and so the blood level of protein will get reduced and so patient will develop edema so here the presentation is edema and non selective protein urea now interesting fact is that even though in such patient in the fsgs if you do the renal transplantation treatment then also 20 to 50 percent patient can recur and uh, you know this particular nephrotic syndrome having the very poor response to the steroid the 50 percent patient will progress to the end stage renal disease in the 10 year of diagnosis right in the 10 year 50 percent patient will have chronic renal failure all right so friends uh, this is all about the focal segmental glomerulosclerosis again i am telling in the electron microscopic appearance main feature is visceral epithelial cell damage right collapsing variant is a having very poor prognosis because here there is a collapse of glomerular tuft and in the focal segmental glomerulosclerosis there is there is only part of glomerulus is involved and if it is present as a nephritic syndrome then there could be increase in the mesangial matrix so this is all about the focal segmental glomerulosclerosis hope you have enjoyed this video right and we will be right back right back with a new video till then take care and bye bye